Thank you for joining our Deep Brain Stimulation Educational Series. This series will provide important information that we hope will answer many of the questions you may have about deep brain stimulation, which we will also refer to as DBS during the presentation. The information in this four-part series will be reviewed with you further during your clinical appointments. We encourage you to write down any questions you may have as you watch this series and bring them to your appointments. During your appointments, we will take the time to answer your questions, review your expectations, and address any concerns you and your family have. This is the fourth and final presentation in our series. We will begin by conducting an overview of deep brain stimulation. Then we will discuss the initial DBS programming visit when the deep brain stimulator is activated. Next, we will review the patient programmer or controller, which allows the patient to check whether the stimulator is on and make adjustments to the stimulation as needed. Possible side effects of deep brain stimulation will also be covered. We will conclude by addressing follow-up visits for ongoing adjustment of the DBS system and review special information and DBS warnings. Let's begin with a brief overview of deep brain stimulation. Deep Brain Stimulation Overview With DBS surgery, you will have one or two leads implanted in your brain. A lead implanted on one side of the brain helps symptoms on the opposite side of the body. Some people have an implantable pulse generator, also known as neurostimulator or battery for each side of the body, while others have only one battery powering both sides. There are two types of batteries, a regular battery and a rechargeable battery. The regular battery will need replacement about every three years. The rechargeable battery can be recharged regularly and will need replacement in about nine years. The initial programming visit is when the battery is turned on and electrical stimulation is delivered to the brain to alter abnormal motor circuit activity. Initial Deep Brain Stimulation Programming Deep brain stimulation will not be turned on until two to four weeks after surgery. This allows time for the brain to heal. Generally, your neurologist will ask you to arrive to the initial programming visit having not taken any Parkinson's disease or essential tremor medication for a specified period of time. We want to ensure your symptoms are apparent so we can assess the effect of the deep brain stimulation. You will need to bring your Parkinson's disease or essential tremor medication to the visit. You may be asked to take your usual dose of medication during your appointment. Your neurology provider will give you specific instructions. The initial programming visit will be approximately two hours long. The first step of programming is evaluating the deep brain stimulation system for problems with the electrode, connector wire, or battery. Once we know there are no problems with the DBS system, each electrode will be tested for symptom improvement and side effects caused by stimulation. It is easiest to see changes in your symptoms due to deep brain stimulation when you are off medication. After testing, you may be asked to take your medication for further evaluation to be completed. Please remember to bring your Parkinson's disease or essential tremor medication with you to your initial programming visit. When your medication kicks in, you may experience symptoms of over-medication like dyskinesia with Parkinson's disease. This may not occur immediately during the visit, so we suggest you remain in a local area for about an hour after your initial programming visit. If the symptoms are severe, you may need to return to the neurology clinic for adjustment of the DBS settings. Plan to rest the day of your initial DBS programming visit, as you may feel more tired than usual after programming. During your visit, you may notice some improvements of your symptoms. This may be temporary and only last a few hours to a few days. Typically, your initial DBS setting is lower than the average setting. This gives your brain and body time to become accustomed to deep brain stimulation. It may take two to three days to see the effects of stimulation. You may experience side effects that go away after a few days, or you may develop new side effects. It is helpful to keep a diary or log of your motor symptoms during this time, so you can share the information with your neurology provider at your next visit. 
Patient Programmer. This is a picture of the Medtronic Patient Programmer or Controller. It can be used with certain Medtronic Activa DBS neurostimulator or battery types. There are other types of patient programmers available depending on the model of your DBS neurostimulator. You will receive your patient programmer after deep brain stimulation surgery. It is recommended that you take the patient programmer with you when you travel just in case an external source of electromagnetic interference, such as a security screening device, accidentally turns your battery off. The patient programmer will allow you to have some control over your DBS system. You will be able to turn the DBS stimulation on and off. Your neurology provider may give you the ability to adjust the DBS stimulation settings at home. You will also have the ability to check the status of the regular battery, which we recommend you do monthly. When the regular battery level starts to get low, you can let your neurosurgeon know and they can plan to have the battery replaced. The rechargeable battery needs to be checked more frequently to ensure that battery recharging is completed. Side Effects of Deep Brain Stimulation If you experience paresthesia, which is tingling or other unusual sensation in your fingers, hands, or feet, or dyskinesia, which are involuntary movements, make a note of it. These side effects usually improve as the brain and body adjust to the electrical stimulation. Dyskinesia can also be a side effect of too much medication after DBS has been turned on. Inform your neurology provider if this continues to be a problem after two to three days. These symptoms as well as any problems with muscle contractions causing cramping, pulling sensations, walking and balance difficulty, or changes in speech should also be noted and reported to your neurology provider at your next appointment. Occasionally, mood changes such as depression, anger, apathy, or other emotional changes can occur. Most side effects can be minimized by changes in the programming, turning down the electrical stimulation or current, or adjusting medication. Follow-up DBS programming visits. It generally is a three to six month process to achieve improvement in your symptoms with deep brain stimulation and adjustment of your medication. There may be several appointments in the first few months of starting deep brain stimulation therapy. This is necessary to find the setting that provides the best control of your symptoms with little to no side effects. You may have a number of visits in the first 12 months after DBS surgery. Sometimes it can take 12 months or longer to find the right DBS setting for you. Periodic programming adjustments and follow-up are made by your neurology provider both during the initial programming phase and over subsequent years as needed. Special Information and Warnings Now that you have the DBS system implanted, there are a few important things to remember. You should not be overly concerned about electronic equipment affecting your DBS system. Most items in your home do not create external interference, so it is safe to use common household appliances such as microwave ovens, computers, cell phones, and Bluetooth devices. Ideally, you should not pass through metal detectors like at the airport or courthouse. When traveling by air, you may show the security agent your Medtronic ID card. You will receive an ID card from Medtronic after your DBS surgery, which states you have an implanted DBS device. If you are required to pass through a metal detector, it is safe, but it may turn your DBS neurostimulator or battery off. You can use your patient programmer or controller to turn your DBS neurostimulator back on. To prevent an infection that travels through your bloodstream to the DBS system hardware, it may be recommended that you take antibiotics prior to dental procedures and any invasive medical procedures. Your neurology provider or dentist can provide you with a prescription for antibiotics. Prior to some medical procedures, such as an EKG or surgery, you may need to turn your DBS system off using your patient programmer. Be sure to turn the DBS system back on after the procedure is completed. Please contact your neurology provider if you're uncertain or have questions. Please avoid certain medical procedures like MRIs. There may be some circumstances when an MRI can be completed. 
However, only special MRI sites may be available to perform this testing. Please be sure to discuss with your neurologist prior to having an MRI done. Also, avoid electrocautery, which is when an electric needle is used to control bleeding during medical procedures. There are some procedures that require electrocautery. Bipolar cautery can be used. It is important to inform both the physician doing the procedure and your neurologist before undergoing a procedure in case additional precautions are needed. Diathermy is a treatment method that uses deep heat therapy and should also be avoided. This treatment may heat up the neurostimulator and or DBS lead and cause damage in your body where the DBS device is implanted. Diathermy is not recommended for patients with DBS. Finally, it is recommended that treatments using defibrillators, CT scans, therapeutic ultrasound, electrolysis, radiation, and lithotripsy should be done with caution. Do not use these treatments directly over the chest where the neurostimulator or battery is implanted. Be sure to tell all your medical and dental providers that you have an implanted DBS device and that caution may be needed if a procedure is planned. Summary Thank you for viewing our video on deep brain stimulation programming. During this video, we have provided you with a brief overview of deep brain stimulation and initial programming of the DBS neurostimulator. The initial programming visit is a lengthy appointment and is the starting point in managing symptoms with deep brain stimulation. We introduced the patient programmer or controller and briefly discussed its uses. A more thorough explanation of the patient programmer will be addressed at your initial programming visit. Side effects of deep brain stimulation that may occur such as tingling in the arms and legs or other sensations, walking or balance difficulty, and changes in speech or mood were also reviewed. We then briefly discussed follow-up DBS programming, where multiple appointments may be required during the first 12 months after surgery to achieve symptoms improvement with a DBS system and adjustment of your medication. Finally, we provided special information and safety warnings pertaining to the DBS system, as well as information on what to avoid. We hope you found this information helpful. The information in this video will be reviewed with you again during your clinical appointments. Any questions or concerns that you have will also be addressed at that time. For additional information and resources, please contact your Movement Disorders Neurologist Office or visit www.kp.org.